It's 6 p.m. on a Sunday here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Daniel Che with the latest on the hour. President Bakune has named a new presidential press secretary after a close aide stepped down from the post. The presidential office of Cheong Wadae on Sunday said Yoon Doo Hyun was tapped as the new secretary. He was noted for his balanced way of thinking and keen analytical skills as a journalist. Yoon spent most of his career at YTN, a 24-hour news channel where he served as the head of the political bureau, the head of YTN Plus, an online and mobile news content provider, and newsroom editor, newsroom director, that is rather. Earlier, President Park accepted the resignation of former press secretary Lee jung hyun signaling that a much-anticipated reshuffle within the presidential office and cabinet is imminent. Another body has been pulled from the sunken Seoro ferry 54 days after the disaster that killed nearly 300 in April. The government's disaster response headquarters said Sunday it had found the body of a female in the third floor cafeteria of the vessel at around 10.35 in the morning. The headquarters will conduct DNA tests and a fingerprint identification after the body is brought to land. Rescue personnel had been searching the area based on testimony given by crew members during the ongoing investigation into the disaster. The discovery brings a number of missing passengers to 13 and the death toll to 291. And the ferry disaster is also taking a toll on the economy here in Korea, denting domestic demand and forcing the government to consider lowering its growth outlook for this year. Our Connie Kim has more. With April's deadly ferry disaster affecting the whole nation, the government is reviewing whether to adjust the economic growth outlook for this year. The finance ministry said Sunday that it's assessing economic activity in the first half of the year as it reviews its predictions for the latter half. The ministry is planning to release its economic policy direction for the second half of the year later this month. The ministry says that its policies will focus on supporting the service sector and small businesses in light of the Seoul ferry disaster. Now, the ministry's plans are expected to include tax breaks and employment subsidies, though the amount of support has not yet been determined. The ministry says the measures will be geared toward boosting domestic demand and improving people's livelihoods. The government last year predicted a growth rate of 3.9 percent for this year. However, a state-run research institute says it is highly unlikely the government can achieve that due to sluggish domestic consumption. Last month, the Korea Development Institute, a government think tank, lowered its growth forecast to 3.7 percent. Connie Kim, Arirang News. And on a somber note, another Korean comfort woman has passed away today. Petrini died at the age of 91, according to the House of Sharing on Sunday. The group runs a shelter for women who were forced into sexual slavery for the Japanese during World War II. Best death leaves only 54 surviving victims in the country. Initially, there were 237 women on the list of government-registered former sex slaves. Historians estimate that up to 200,000 comfort women, mostly from Korea and China, were forced into sexual slavery during World War II. Korea has been urging Tokyo to apologize to and compensate the victims. But Japan says that the issue was resolved through a 1965 treaty that normalized bilateral ties between the two countries. An American researcher has urged Korea, the U.S., and China to engage in trilateral talks on Korean reunification. Kim Yun Bin has more on a provocative suggestion she had about the U.S. troop presence on the peninsula. Sumi Terry, a senior researcher with the Weatherhead East Asian Institute at Columbia University, says that South Korea, the U.S., and China need to engage in active discussion on the future of reunified Korea. Terry, a former director of Korea, Japan, and Oceanic Affairs at the National Security Council, made the remarks at a congressional hearing last week. Terry said that in order to change China's policy on North Korea, Seoul and Washington need to convince Beijing that Korean reunification will be beneficial for the country. She added that the U.S. needs to promise not to dispatch its troops north of the border, 
after reunification is achieved. She also went as far as to say that the U.S. should consider pulling its troops out of Korea entirely to win Beijing's support, saying that this would ease China's security concerns and could encourage Beijing to put more pressure on North Korea. She said the move would not be a diplomatic policy failure for Washington, as U.S. troops were first stationed on the peninsula to defend South Korea after the Korean War. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Elsewhere around the world, Petro Poroshenko, a pro-European billionaire confectioner, was sworn in as the fifth president of Ukraine on Saturday. In his inaugural speech, he made it clear that he would not give up on Crimea nor compromise on Ukraine's push for closer ties with Europe. The 48-year-old chocolate king stressed the need for a united Ukraine and the urgency of ending the conflict that threatens to further split the country. He added he would sign the economic part of an association deal with the European Union as a step towards full membership. And in what could be a positive signal from Moscow, Russian news agencies reported that President Vladimir Putin ordered the Federal Security Service to strengthen protection of the border with Ukraine and prevent people crossing illegally. Ukraine and Western governments have been pressing Moscow to stop what they say is a flow of Russian arms and fighters into eastern Ukraine. A wave of car bombs exploded across Baghdad on Saturday, killing more than 60 people. There were a dozen blasts in mainly Shiite districts of the capital, the deadliest of which occurred in Baya, where a car bomb took more than 23 lives. Other bombs went off near a cinema, a popular juice shop, and a Shiite mosque. No group immediately claimed responsibility for any of the bombings, but the Shiite community is a frequent target for Sunni Islamist insurgents. Critics of Iraq's Shiite-led government say over-reliance on force to solve things will worsen the security situation, and many fear that the violence could spread to Sunni-dominated provinces. Korean mobile messaging service LINE has reached another milestone, 450 million registered users and it's aiming for more by the year's end. The subsidiary of Korean search engine giant Naver attracted 30 million users in the month of May alone, thanks largely to its Southeast Asian users. Line currently has 24 million users in Thailand, 20 million in Taiwan, and 20 million more in Indonesia. Globally, it has 15 million users in Spain, 10 million in Mexico, and 50 million in Japan, among other countries. And Naver is still thirsty for more. It set a year-end goal of 500 million users, and there are rumors that Line is reviewing an IPO with a dual U.S. and Japanese listing. The estimated valuation is in the range of $10 billion. How much is that? Here's some insight into how much that exactly is worth. Facebook paid $19 billion for WhatsApp, a service similar to Line. Installing solar panels can make a home more energy efficient, of course, but the setup costs can make the move unaffordable for many homeowners. Local companies have come up with an easy way to lease out the equipment, even to those who cannot afford the initial investment. Our Son jung -in has more. From the bright lights in the living room to the air conditioner and TV, all these home appliances are running on energy provided from a solar panel on the roof of the house. But the installation doesn't come cheap, with an average cost of seven to eight thousand U.S. dollars. In order to lessen the burden for homeowners, solar companies came up with so-called solar panel rental program. Under the lease agreement, they can borrow the equipment for under seventy dollars a month. Last summer, we ran the air conditioner all season, and the monthly electricity bill came to around $1,000. But after we installed the solar panel, we are now paying just one-fifth of the usual bill. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy says homeowners that pay on average $100 for electricity a month can save up to $15 every month, even after paying the rental and electricity fees. If you sign up for the sunlight panel rental service, we set the facility up for free. The rental period covers the costs of any repairs and maintenance, so you can save more money. Only non-apartment building houses that are well insulated and are not facing the south are currently eligible for the service. The government plans to promote ways for the one and a half million houses qualified to benefit from the lease program so they can save both the planet 
and money. 손정인 아리랑 뉴스. Now the weather it's been a cloudy Sunday in most parts of the country and it's expected to continue on Monday. And now here's a look at the weather conditions in other parts of our world. And that's all we've got for you at this hour. For more, tune in at 10 p.m. Korea time. Thank you for being with us.